Feinstein, welcome to Conversations and Music with me. I've been thinking about how American popular songs change their clothes through the decades, how they are interpreted in different ways in different decades. And one of the things that struck me is a lot of songs that we know as ballads sometimes didn't start their lives that way, even when they were originally written to be sung as ballads in a show or in a movie. The general tempo of American popular music back in the 20s and 30s was faster. I don't know why that is, but when I listen to vintage recordings of, of ballads, they're almost always at a, at a pace or a tempo that is surprisingly fast. A good example of that would be a song that Helen Morgan sang in Showboat in 1927. She introduced it called Can't Help Loving That Man. People always sing it. Fish gotta swim, birds gotta fly. Listen to the original Helen Morgan recording. It's fish gotta swim, birds gotta fly. I gotta love one man till I die. It had a beat and kind of a bounce to it that people don't want to hear it that way anymore. And I suppose that the slower tempo does give more weight to the lyrics and it is it has extended the lives of these songs. And it wasn't until the 1950s that there was a general sea change in the way these older songs were performed. Some of that can be attributed certainly to Frank Sinatra, who changed the face of popular music in many different ways, at least concerning the way standards were performed. He started collaborating with Nelson Riddle, and together they evolved a new way of singing older songs that became not only contemporary for that time, but became timeless in that we still listen to a lot of American popular standards or like to hear them with a big band setting or that kind of a swing sound. But that didn't really happen till the 1950s. In the 1920s, songwriters were writing songs not only for shows and films, talking films at the end of the 1920s, but for records and for dance bands that were starting to appear. And so they started to think in terms of songs being sung with with a beat as opposed to being interpreted freely or, or out of tempo. For example, the song Stormy Weather, which was introduced by Ethel Waters in 1933 at the Cotton Club, was not only introduced by Miss Waters, but it was with the Duke Ellington Band. So when Harold Arlen and Ted Kohler wrote Stormy Weather, they had the Ellington Band in mind as much as they did Ethel Waters, who is one of the great torch singers of all time. And she sang a song, can't go on, everything I had is gone, stormy weather. So again, it was a, it was a, it was a faster tempo. Uh, Girl Crazy, produced on Broadway in 1930, gave us the song Embraceable You, which Ginger Rogers introduced. And uh, the way it was uh, performed in 1930 was... <laughs> Sense. And uh, so it's just the way that the, the torch songs were done back then. Even Over the Rainbow, if you listen to Judy Garland's original recording or her film performance of Over the Rainbow and the Decca record, which was a bestseller, um, Over the Rainbow is performed uh, somewhere. at that tempo now. Uh, Mr. Sinatra sometimes would take a ballad and swing it, as he did with Fly Me to the Moon, which was written. Fly me to the moon and let me play among the stars. It was written in three-quarter time, but he did. Fly me to the moon and let me play among the stars. So there's that. Uh, the Lady is a Tramp, which is a song that Sinatra also did in a swing version. She gets too hungry for dinner and eat. Originally that was in a show called uh, Babes in Arms, and it was sung first person by a lady, and it was... I get too hungry for dinner and eat. It was that tempo. So uh, these things... 
things just change. The 1950s, for example, gave us the movie An American in Paris. And there were two songs in that film that were sung considerably slower than uh, the way they were originally introduced. Love is Here to Stay. When it was introduced in the Goldman Follies, it was... sang it with the Conrad Salinger chart in an American in Paris. It's very clear. Our love is here to stay. Which is a version that Ira Gershwin came to prefer. Another song that was slowed down is this one. Originally from the scandals of 1922, the George White scandals of 1922. I'll build a stairway to paradise. done in an American Paris uh, by George Guitari. Give it more of the blues feeling that uh, was quite different uh, from the 1920s. Singing in the Rain. Uh, we think of Gene Kelly's version, you know. Da -da -da -da. become very much associated as being a ballad, did not start its life as a ballad. It's called I've Got a Crush on You, and it was originally created for a show called Treasure Girl in 1928, and it was written as a one-step, which was the fastest kind of dance you could do in those days. And it was uh, sung and danced by Clifton Webb and his partner, partner Mary Hay, like this. I've got a crush on you, sweetie pie. In the late 1930s, it got its first commercial recording and was recorded as a ballad by a great, great American popular singer named Lee Wiley, who sang it much slower. And when Ira Gershwin, who wrote the lyrics, heard that song sung that way, he was at first flummoxed. And then he came to realize that it actually sounded better that way, something that he never could have conceived when he originally created it. And then in the, la in the late, in the late 1940s, Frank Sinatra did a, a definitive recording of it, even though he re-recorded it later, and it became cemented as a ballad, so much so that the publishers reprinted the sheet music with a ballad accompaniment. So this is the way we know it now. How glad the many millions of Annabelles and Lillians would be. such persistence, you wore down my resistance, I fell, and it was swell. I'm your big and brave and handsome Romeo, how you won me, I shall never, never know. It's not that you're attractive, but oh, my heart grew active.
on you. So um, Mr. Sinatra elongated the ending of that song. That was a, a Sinatraism that has remained in the interpretation. Another song that started its life in fast tempo, even though uh, the public never heard it that way, is this one. Gershwin were working on a show in 1926 called OK, and this was to be the dance number in the show. Uh, no lyric had been written for it yet. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that syncopation is what was the trick of that melody. But when George was playing it one day for Ira, he started to slow down because he was distracted. Play that slow and he played. And they turned it into the big ballad of the show. Now it was played and sung by Gertrude Lawrence. But still, it ended up as a ballad. Now, George Gershwin made a commercial recording of it as a piano solo. And people always comment about how fast the tempo is of that recording. Well, the reason he recorded it so quickly is because it was a record made for dancing. So I'd like to play you a little bit of George Gershwin's original 78 RPM recording of Someone to Watch Over Me. He recorded this on November 8th, 1926 for Columbia Records. And it is a record that he recorded in very, very strict tempo. I can't tell if this is reading or not. You can see it. Yeah, okay. So this uh, record is one that it says piano solo, and then below it, it says fox trot. So it makes it clear that it's for dancing, and that's why it is so metronomic. When Gershwin played at parties and such in that era, he did not play with such uh, metronome precision unless unless he chose to but this was a record so people could dance along to it now rather than play you the uh, relatively oft heard take of someone to watch over me I have a disc that is an unissued take uh, a performance that was not meant to be commercially released they issued let's see Take three. Take three was the take that they issued. He did three takes of it, and they issued his third take. However, this one is take two, and it says on it, second choice, which means that if the original master were, were to become damaged in some way, or for some reason they couldn't use it, he gave permission for them to use this second choice. This disc actually belonged at one time to George Gershwin, and to my knowledge, it is the only existing copy of this performance, which sounds very much like the issued one, except he makes a couple of slight mistakes. But I'm just gonna play a little bit of it for you uh, in keeping with our theme of hearing what these 20s ballads sounded like uh, back in the day. So let's see how we do here. <laughs> There's a saying old says that love is blind Still we're often told, seek and ye shall find 
So I'm going to seek a certain lad I've had in mind. Looking everywhere, haven't found him yet. I know what you're thinking. Let him play, right? Okay. <laughs> Upstairs. So to contrast the Gershwin recording of Someone to Watch Over Me, I'm going to sing it for you. Uh, it's a song that um, has a, a bunch of different lyrics, actually, because Ira wrote a, um, a male lyric. It was originally supposed to be sung by Gertrude Lawrence, and it was sung by Gertrude Lawrence in OK. And then Ira wrote some alternate lines, some of which I've interpolated, a couple of which were left out of the complete lyrics of Ira Gershwin because uh, Perhaps Robert Kimball didn't have access to them for one reason or another. But um, this is a song that uh, Ira Gershwin told me that he wrote about himself. At least one line was autobiographical, which was unusual for him because he always wrote for character. But he did confess that the line, he may not be the man some girls think of as handsome, as one that was autobiographical. Because he wrote this song just around the time he married Leonor Gershwin, and he did not feel himself to be attractive to the opposite sex because he was chubby and uh, wore glasses and was balding and um, his brother George was this incredible masculine specimen whom women fawned over and he felt that by comparison he had uh, uh, very little to offer. Of course that was not true and uh, he married Leonor Stransky and they uh, were married for uh, well over 50 years. And so, um, this is their song. There's a saying old says that love is blind. Still we're often told, sick and ye shall find. So I'm going to seek a certain girl I've had in mind. Looking everywhere, haven't found her yet. She's the big affair. I cannot forget Only girl I ever think of with regret I'd like to add my initial to her monogram Tell me where is the shepherd for this lost land
here's one more song that comes from the ragtime era around 1915 by Irving Berlin, and it was originally... I love a piano, and uh, people may know the song from the movie Easter Parade when it was done by Judy Garland and Fred Astaire, and I decided to slow that one down in the uh, latter part of the 1980s when I was starting my nightclub career, and I was very, very excited to learn that Irving Berlin had heard my recording of the song uh, through his attorney and that he liked it and approved of my changing the tempo. So uh, here it is. As a child I got wild when the band played How I ran to the man when his hands swayed Clarinets were my pets and the sly trombone I thought was simply divine. But today when they play, I could hiss them. Every bar is a jar to my system. But there's one musical instrument that I I love the piano. I love the piano. I love to hear somebody play on a piano, a grand piano. It simply carries me away. Thank you.